Honorable Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, first, warmest congratulations on your runaway victory in the recently concluded Lok Sabha and Assembly elections. Honorable Deputy Chief Minister, Honorable Ministers, members of parliament and members of the Legislative Assembly, friends, me media colleagues and friends. It's an honor to be invited here to say a few words about Sri Ramoji Rao at this commemoration meeting organized by the government of uh, Andhra Pradesh. I first got to know Sri Ramoji Rao personally when he was president of the Editors Guild of India. That was in the late 1980s. It was a time of deep churn and excitement in Indian politics, triggered mainly by journalistic investigations of corruption and abuse of power in high places. Bofors, which was being aggressively investigated by the press, and I had a role in that investigation, had come to the center of Indian politics. Thoughts of the coming general election were in everybody's mind. In July 1988, the Rajiv Gandhi government introduced the Defamation Bill 1988. It was an amendment proposed to the law of criminal defamation that had more draconian provisions than the existing law. These provisions were specifically targeted at investigative journal journalists and the media organizations they worked for, the, the newspapers they worked for. So much responsibility for seeing the protest movement through vested with the Editors Guild of India, which then as now had its work cut out. I worked closely with Sri Ramoji Rao during this inspiring movement and was deeply impressed by his leadership qualities. Firmness and steadfastness on the principles at stake, clarity on the goal to be achieved, and that goal was unconditional withdrawal of the defamation bill, but also wise diplomacy in allowing the government to save face. That was precisely what happened. The leadership of the movement and the lacks of journalists involved stood firm. And to the credit of Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, when he realized what he was up against, he summoned an emergency cabinet meeting where he announced that the defamation bill would be withdrawn immediately. He also signed a press release st stating that a free press is an integral part of the inner strength and dynamism of our democracy. I remember now, even now Sri Ramoji Rao's quiet and complete satisfaction over the goal achieved, but no sense of triumphalism, not in the least. I don't want to spend a lot of time going into the founding of Enad in 1974 in Visakhapatnam, but it was a transformational moment because innovation, the embrace of new technology combined with an uncompromising pursuit of high production values and excellence in reporting, particularly ground reporting, reporting on, on, on the field. Robin Jeffrey, the Australian political scientist, in his book India's Newspaper Revolution has a lot to say about the pioneering qualities of Sri Ramoji Rao and E. Nadir, its marketing methods, its bringing out district editions, covering local news close to the people, its pursuit of credibility and serving up interesting stories, but that were important. But this, I think, was a transformative contribution to the India's Indian language newspapers and subsequently, as everybody knows, he went into television, ETV. But what stood out was a clear vision that 
newspapers had every right to take political positions, but they must remain independent from government pressure and assault. And whatever assaults came his way, we know what happened earlier and more recently towards the end of his life. Uh, he stood brave, basically saying that I'm what, let them take away everything. I'm willing to face it, but I will not give up this, these principles and the stand that I've taken. And that is something that is rare today in Indian journalism. His love of the Telugu language, his contribution to the Telugu language, introducing, Inad is introducing a new vocabulary has been written about. His, I won't say anything about his contributions to the world of cinema and building a great infrastructure for it, the Ramoji Film City. But above all, for me, what I want to highlight here in the few moments allotted to me is that he stood for an independent and upstanding press and media and gender, news media. He believed in the credible information function of journalism. He believed in its critical investigative function. He believed in its educational function. And it also contributed to setting a good agenda. That's what he believed in. Sri Ramoji Rao was targeted viciously because those who could not stomach the spirit of independence he practiced all his life and the politics he championed thought they had detected a vulnerability given that he had other and diversified business interests. And that was targeted. They thought they could cripple his financial base, but they proved mistaken. His inner strength and resilience and the strength the internal strength of the organizations he had built and the governance that he had put in place prevailed over such attacks. I learned from his younger family members, his young family members, that he faced death stoically. I learned from them that he spoke to them about death often saying essentially that since it was inevitable, there was nothing to fear. One of his granddaughters yesterday at the hotel I was staying uh, related this to me and I think he waited and achieved what philosophers term a good death. We will not be honoring and commemorating the legacy of Sri Ramoji Rao, an outstanding and historic figure in, in the media, in the history of the Indian press and the media in general. If we do not stand up and fight for the values of freedom, democracy and independence that he stood for. And I particularly look forward to the veteran politi political leader, Chief Minister Chandrababu Naidu, for supporting that he will support this and wherever the press or the media or journalists come under attack, from, for example, from anti-terrorism laws or laws claiming to protect national security, he will stand up in support. He will, he will support this cause. I, I think he believes in it, and we are hopeful on that note. This is our best tribute to Sri Ramoji Rao, and I'm proud to have been a friend of his who knew him for several decades. Thank you.